Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this series. Today we're going to continue with the lighthouse. However, I do need to have this video, which is going to be like an interlude video, where I need to teach you about Unreal Engine, because that's the engine that we're going to be using to get everything together, like make sure everything works as a, as a video game scene. And uh, yeah, so let's jump right into it, shall we? Uh, at the time of this recording, my friends, there are two versions for Unreal Engine that you can have access to. So you're, you're going to have to download, of course, your Epic Launcher right here. And if you go here into UE4 or library, you're going to be able to install as many versions as you want. There's all of the versions, all the way from 4.0 uh, to 4.27.2, which is the latest one. Um, you also have access. I think you need to go in, into the internet and, and go for like this link that's going to install your uh, Unreal uh, Engine 5, which is the newest version. It's still on early, on early access, so it's not uh, recommended that you use it for uh, production to create your own video game because you might find some bugs or things that might not as expected. Uh, however, they do have promise that, or they have promised that if you work on 4.27, migrating later on on 5.0 will be a, a, an easy way to upgrade something. And you can also uh, work on 5.0 and then once an, a stable final release comes out, you're going to be able to just jump into that one. So I just double click or click there on launch and this is the window that we get, which is um, our basic like Windows setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit games right here and I'm going to create a third person game, which is going to be my base. Uh, the target platform is going to be desktop, quality preset, I'm going to set to maximum. Uh, if you're going for like mobile and stuff, you can change this over here. Uh, I do want to have the starter constant. I don't want to have ray tracing turned on uh, right now. I do think we can turn it on later on. And the reason I'm not going to turn it on is because I don't have a ray tracing card. Um, so yeah, where are we going to have this? I'm actually going to move it to our project. So let's go here to next to live. There we go. And right here, I actually already have one uh, project. So I'm going to select this folder and let's call this project um, Lighthouse. Lighthouse Story or something, just to give it a little bit of a dramatic thing, right? So yeah, let's create this. And it will create the project, it will create all the subfolders, everything, and the engine will launch. It usually takes a little bit to launch, especially if you have like a slow machine or, or not a lot of hard drive space. Um, I personally am running with a very limited hard drive right now. My main drive is uh, <laughs> it's about to give up, but uh, yeah. So let's see if this uh, goes fast. If not, uh, we'll just wait. And while this is loading, let me open up Maya. Very well. So why, are, uh, why do I need to teach you uh, Unreal? Well, because we're going to be doing a lot of cool stuff inside of it. And uh, one of the things that we're going to be talking about, and we're going to start with this tomorrow. Oh, this whole week I have planned it out for, for the Lighthouse. So tomorrow, which should be uh, Monday, we're going to be working on the, um, what's the word? On the uh, textures, a lot of texture work. We're going to start with texture work, which is one of the main things that we're missing. So let's go real quick here. Let's set the project. Let's grab our next to live. There we go. And then let's open the lighthouse scene. So it's this one. There we go. That's unreal. We'll, we'll go, uh, go back in just a second. And yep, there we go. This is what we have, right? Like most of the things like already, uh, well, yeah, kind of ready for the whole thing. So here's what I'm going to do because I, I, I want to have this scene inside of unreal and, and start like seeing how things work, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab every single piece right here, every single piece, like everything. Maybe except like this guy's over there. I'm going to say file, export selection, and I'm going to export this as an OBJ. Very important that I do an OBJ. You're going to see why in just a second. I'm going to go to assets folder, lighthouse, and right here, outside of every other thing, I'm just going to say, say uh, export this as lighthouse um, object or just like full scene. Let's call it full scene. And I'm not going to export materials. I do not want to export materials right now because I don't want extra information. So I'm just going to export selection. Let's open a new scene. Oh, let's open a new scene. Don't save this one. I'm going to say File, Import. I'm going to go to my Assets folder, Lighthouse. Where is it? There we go. And just import the full scene. And the reason I'm importing the full scene is even though we did not export with materials, if I were to select everything, as you can see right here, let me see if I can just like select all by type geometry we're still going to have a lot of shading groups. Oh, no, we don't. Perfect. Okay, that's great. We only have one uh, one object, so that, that's awesome. So now this will allow me to actually import this thing inside of uh, Unreal. So this is the new version for Unreal Engine 5, which is really cool. The, the interface has been streamlined. I think we've talked about this before. I'm not sure if I did the Aku, Aku mask on, the five, uh, on Unreal 5. I think I did. Um, I don't want to update this, so that's fine. 
and it's very easy to navigate. You navigate in a very similar fashion as in Maya. You're gonna click Alt and click to move around, Alt and middle click to pan, and Alt and a right click to zoom. And you can also use the WASD. If you right click and press WASD, you can just like maneuver as if you were in the game. Like if you're a little like flying ship, you're just moving around the whole thing. So yeah, now we could create a new level, but I'm actually gonna reuse this one right here. And I'm gonna select this guy, just click, and I'm just gonna hit uh, or delete to delete the whole thing. There we go. And uh, now we're gonna import the lighthouse. So I'm gonna go here into my content browser, which is a content browser. It's your, your file hierarchy that you see outside in Windows. It's, it's, it's still in here. I'm just gonna create a new folder to keep things organized. I'm gonna call this lighthouse. Everything's gonna go in this nice little folder. And I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this lighthouse test. Just so that I know that anything that's inside this folder is not gonna be useful later on. I'm gonna right click again. I'm gonna say import. And uh, I'm gonna go into our uh, projects uh, folder. So let's go 2021 and next to live assets. Can you believe 2021 is about to be over guys? It's been quite a ride, right? Almost six months of, of uh, daily content, almost daily content. When we started, we didn't have a daily content, but now we do. I'm just gonna hit open here. And I'm gonna select a couple of things. As you can see here, it, it is trying to export this on FBX, which is weird because I think I, I, I thought I exported this on OBJ, but that's fine. Um, I don't want Nanite, that's fine. I'm gonna go here into the material. I'm gonna create new material, or I'm actually just gonna say, do not create material. I don't want any new materials, it's just like the basic gray. And it's very important that we do select the option to combine the objects. So right here, one of the arrows that I just clicked, there's an option to combine objects, which should be here, combine meshes. So I'm gonna enable this. It's very important that I enable this just for this particular case. And the reason why I wanna um, do that is to make sure that I just modify the whole thing as a whole object, right? Because I, I just wanna have like a general idea of where things are. There we go. So there's bad tangents, there's zero tangents, zero by null, that's fine. Those are just warnings. As you can see, the thing did import properly. So I can just drag and drop it over here. And there we go, look at this. Our whole world is ready to roll. So I'm just gonna rotate this 90 degrees. And the reason the object came in uh, like with a bad rotation is because we uh, exported this as an OBJ and um, the coordinates inside of Unreal are different than the coordinates inside of Maya. As you can see here, if I press W, C is pointing upwards. So in Maya, you know it's X, left and right, uh, C, front and back, and then Y, up and down. In Unreal, it's uh, X, uh, left and right, Y, front and back, and then C, up and down. So it's gonna be a little bit different there. If you export as an FBX, it should automatically know that it's coming from Maya, and then you shouldn't get any of these issues. So let's move this thing around. Oop. And as you can see, the scale is working properly. So let me delete all of these guys over here. Not everything, there's a couple things that I do wanna keep, but all of the geometry, let's go. What's that? Uh, yeah, let's get rid of the text. The player start is fine. That's a reflection capture, that's fine for now. We'll, we'll talk about all of these things later on, don't worry. We have a little bit of fog, that's great. So I'm just gonna move this guy back to, to, the, to the beginning, right there. And the problem is, if I were to grab my character right here and move it up and then hit play, I would just like be pushed out. Why? Because right now, this object, if I double click, um, this is right now using um, a collision mesh that's pretty much just like a giant box. So I'm gonna go here to collision and the, I believe we can see the collision. Where is it? I'm not sure where the collision is, but I'm gonna remove the collision and then I'm gonna go all the way down here. You can see there's a lot of materials. I actually would like to delete all of them, but eh, whatever. And I'm gonna go all the way down here to collision presets. And I'm gonna change this from uh, project default to use a complex collision as a symbol, okay? So this is a super bad way to do things, but what it will do is it will pretty much change every single polygon into a collision mesh. So now if I hit play, I should be able to be right here. Pretty cool, right? So there we go. As you can see, like the size of the level, it looks great. The size of the door looks good. Small barrel over there. The nets look good. The stairs, maybe a little bit small. I think a couple of areas are a little bit small, but overall this looks good. And as you can see, it took me not, absolutely no time to create or make this a playable level. We're gonna talk about proper the proper way to do this later on, don't worry. But as of now, as you can see, like my, my original, remember this box, this box which was our original uh, like proportion thing, it's working perfectly. You can see that the proportion is very, very nice. It's, it's great. So yeah, I mean, this is it. This is uh, the object right here inside of, uh, inside of uh, Unreal. Now, let's do one, a couple more things uh, that again, just like the basics of things. So materials, Mater 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 
materials inside of um, inside of uh, Unreal can be accessed in two different ways. Right click here and just create a new material. I'm gonna rename this like M gray 50. So I know this is gonna be 50% gray. And if I double click, I'm gonna go into the material editor, which is very similar to a hyper shade, right? This is the material node, this is my preview settings over here, and I'm gonna be able to connect all sorts of maps over here. So I'm gonna press number three and click on the object or any place on the grid right here. And this will create something called a three vector, which is uh, an object, a, a little node inside of Unreal that has three values. And we know that colors have three values, RGB. So we're gonna be able to change the values of this element to whatever we want. So let's go to like a 50% gray. So I'm just gonna say 0.5 here on the, on the gray, just hit okay, and a drag and drop this into the base color. Now this sphere will be 50% gray. Another thing I wanna do is I, I don't want this thing to be shiny, so I want this to be matte, and, and that is driven by the specular uh, option, right? So I'm gonna press a one and click, and this is gonna create something called a float. So this is just a float value, a, a value that you can define as any number uh, imaginable, and uh, we're just gonna plug this in into specular. So it's gonna be a serious specular. And then I'm gonna do another float, and I'm gonna set this to one. I'm gonna set this roughness to one. So now this object is completely matte, so it, it reflects absolutely no light, and all of the light that gets hit, it's completely rough uh, on the object. So I'm just gonna hit save. This will compile the shader, and now very easy, I just drag and drop this on top of this guy right here. Now the reason why this is not applying everywhere is even though we did have only like a Lambert color, it actually remembers like the materials that it had uh, from Maya. So there's like material slots, as you can see right here. So I think what I can do is, and if I select this guy right here, you can see all of this, right? All of these material IDs, and um, there's so many of them. There's like what? Like, oh my god, oh my god, no, that's too many. Okay, let's fix it real quick. I think we can go here, and if we go into the material options, uh, where is it? We should be able to delete the objects right here. There we go. So I'm just gonna have to. Um, can we delete this? Or sometimes you need to have like an assigned material or something. 440 material slots? Oh my God, is that really what I'm doing here? Wow, that's too many. So it's one material slot per object. Okay, easiest way to fix it. Super, super easy way to fix it. Let's go back here to Maya. Let's select all by type geometry. Right click or actually just combine. So um, mesh combine, so it's a single object. We'll take a little bit of a while, of course because it's a 2 million uh, or 200,000 triangle. It's not that bad, by the way, but it's, it is quite heavy. Let's do the history. And now technically, we should only have one material. Play history. There we go. So yeah, you can see just number one. So grab this guy, file, export selection. Let's export it again here on the OBJ. And then what we can do, super easy, just go back here into Unreal. And this is what we do in, in production. We, we constantly like re-import things. I'm just gonna hit re-import. And when we uh, re-import this thing, uh, all of the material elements should be gone. I'm gonna uh, select this guy and done. There we go. So I've su successfully re-imported the whole thing. So technically we shouldn't have any other weird things anymore. Uh, I still see a lot of elements over here, but that's fine. At least everything is a single color now. So yeah, now, uh, as I was mentioning, these are the materials that we're gonna be using. So you guys remember the material that we did for the stones, right? Like this guy over here. If we wanted to create the material here, it's very, very easy. I'm just gonna click here, create a new material. Let's call this M uh, stones. I'm gonna move this material later on to another place. And uh, super easy, it's just a matter of going into our folder here. Let's go to assets, lighthouse, and then we have rock walls, textures, remember this guys over here? So we have, we need this one, this one, uh, this one, or actually the gray one. Um, we do need the displacement, even though we're, we're not gonna use it just yet, and we need the normal map. Actually, let's just do the three, like the three basic ones, so I can show you, because there's, there's one thing that we're gonna be doing quite a bit. So there we go, you just drag and drop them over here, and they are loaded into our content browser, super easy. And now it's just a matter of dragging and dropping them right here into our uh, scene. There we go. Now the normal map goes, as you might expect, on the normal map channel. The color map goes onto the base color, but this one, this one's important. And a lot of my students, um, I was gonna say a bad word, screw this up. 
And the, the thing is, this image, if you guys remember, is actually combining a couple of channels. We have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, right? The red channel is our ambient occlusion, the green channel is our roughness, and then the blue channel is of metallic, which in this case we don't have any. And all of these three channels are combined into a single texture. But those channels are black and white channels. So you guys know from our Maya uh, classes that whenever you have a texture that's supposed to be black and white, you don't want to do any color correction on the image. And that thing right or this thing right here, this sRGB node is doing that. It's correcting some of the colors. I don't want that. So this is like turning this off is pretty much as telling uh, Unreal, hey, this is going to be a raw image. Just treat it as a raw image. So now we just drop this right here and you're going to be able to see this over here where it says sampler type is a linear color instead of a color. Okay, super important that this one's a linear color. Normal map doesn't really matter. Like you can leave this as a normal because it knows it's a normal map. As you can see, it, it treats this as a normal map. So we don't have to do this unlinearized thing on the on the normal map. Uh, yeah, just, just keep that in mind. So the R is my ambient occlusion, which is going to, again, darken some of my colors over here. There we go. And then the green is going to be going into our, our roughness. Now, we have a problem. The problem is that the normal map, as you can see here, is looking inverted, right? It looks like the stones are coming like to the other side. And the reason why this is happening, we've mentioned this before in other videos, is this is a, norm, uh, a OpenGL normal map. And OpenGL normal maps are uh, flipped compared to uh, DirectX. And uh, I think, no, I'm not sure if someone in the comments mentioned this or a friend of mine told me about this, but one of the reasons why some companies choose to do OpenGL or DirectX is if you want to use DirectX, you need to pay a license. And some people just want to save the license. In this case, Unreal did pay the license for DirectX. Um, or are they owned by Microsoft? I'm not sure. I think they are owned by Microsoft, aren't they? Can't remember. Anyway, so super simple fix. I'm just going to go here to the normal map and there's an option over here, which we can use to flip it. Where is it? Compression type, no, where is it? Is it here or maybe it was in this option? Uh -huh. Oh no, it's not. Okay, I think, I think we can re-import this because when you import the texture, um, you can set, tell this if this is a, if it's a normal map or like a normal normal or not a normal map. So let me grab this one right here. Let's force delete. And let's go back to our images right here. There's also a note that we can use, but I, I thought we had like a flip option. There's usually a flip option. Okay, it's not, it's not giving me the flip. I'm pretty sure it was over here. It is a world normal map. Uh, here we go, flip, flip green channel. That's the only thing we need to do, flip the green channel. And when we flip the green channel, now the uh, normal map will work as a direct X normal map. So there we go, because it, it pretty much just changes that. And yeah, you can see here, it looks pretty good, right? Uh, so yeah, this is this is pretty much the thing. We're gonna be doing a lot of texture work. Tomorrow we're gonna be talking about a very important topic, which is uh, material like combination. Like we wanna paint the walls of the, of the lighthouse uh, and we want to have certain areas be brick and certain areas be other elements, but we don't want to have like one specific texture set for each one. So we're going to be using masks. We're going to be using some of the techniques that we saw for the cliff and we're going to be using this build right here. Okay. So if you're following along, probably not right now at the time of this recording, because I, I'm not sure if anyone is uh, like actually following video by video, but if you are, then congratulations. Uh, if you're watching this a long time in the future or later in the future and you're following the steps, make sure you feel uh, like you understand how and why we're important things this way uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of this build up okay so this was just a basic ui interface basic uh like material setup and basic just like uh in this case um collision setup okay so now you can see that the characters it's, it's working everything's working nicely everything is uh it's flowing and, and you can see that the proportions the scale of the whole thing looks very very nice so eventually when we have the finished product i think this thing is going to be amazing so yeah that's it for now guys i'll see you back tomorrow we'll continue with the lighthouse unless uh, anything like major comes up but right now the schedule says that we're going to be uh moving forward with this guy okay so let us know in the comments what you think about this one let us know um what do you think about the series questions anything you know maybe say hi <laughs> i'll see you back tomorrow guys have fun Bye bye